What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're continuing a short conservation project for this copy of Fantastic Four number 17, published by Marvel Comics in August of 1963 by Stan the Man Lee and Jack King Kirby. It's 60 years old now and needs a little bit of our help making sure it survives the next 60 years, so we're going to perform a conservation with a very light touch. In episode 1, we did a thorough assessment and documentation of the condition of the comic before we begin any conservation work, and we developed our game plan for this conservation project. This comic book is in pretty good shape, but we found a few flaws that we'd like to address including several small tears to the cover, some cover water stains, a spine roll, a larger tear to the center fold, and a large disruption of the gloss on the back cover, in addition to general soiling and moderate tanning of the cover. Our game plan includes disassembly of the comic, dry clean of the cover, a quick wet clean of the cover and the center fold with deacidification and chemical stabilization, and archival tear seals using Japanese paper and wheat paste. Importantly, we'll do this work with a goal of achieving no noticeable difference in the paper quality between the center fold and the rest of the inner wraps. Then, we'll treat the loss of gloss on the back cover, reassemble this comic book, refold it, removing the spine roll while we're at it, and give it a final press. This project will be complete when we document the final results. If you want to watch the first episode before watching this one, just follow the link to the playlist for this project. Today, we're going to disassemble this comic book and begin the dry cleaning process. But, before we get to our main topic, I want to thank everyone for helping us achieve our goal of 1,000 subscribers. That triggered our giveaway of this copy of Star Wars No. 1 in CGC 7.5 with white pages. Published in 1977, this is the first appearance of Luke, Leia, Vader, R2, 3PO, and a host of others as well as the first cover appearance of Obi-Wan and Han Solo. The drawing will be on September 29th, so it's not too late to qualify to win. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and follow the link over to that video to comment there for a chance to win. All right, let's get to work. So per usual, clean and dry hands. I'm going to find the centerfold here because our first order of business is disassembling this book. We could dry clean with it intact, but if we're going to dry clean the cover, especially both sides, the interior and exterior, I'd just as soon disassemble it first. I used two tools here, both from Rick Morgan over at Immaculate Comics. I'm going to use the capable staple tool and the flawless staple tool. You can use other tools. I like both of these. They work well. They're inexpensive. They support fellow hobbyists. So I use them. The flawless staple tool has a Teflon coating, which helps to not mar the staples or put any marks on them that CGC or anybody would discover, which would lead them to believe that the comic book may have been messed with. And with conservation, we're not trying to hide the fact that we worked on the book. We're just trying to make our impact minimal. So I don't want to mar the original staples. I don't want to disrupt their original patina. So a nice tool that's Teflon coated that will assist me in removing the staples without disturbing that original patina is exactly what I want. The goal here is to apply pressure to keep the paper and the staple immobile with respect to one another, with the exception of the one arm that we're trying to manipulate. I like to just bend it up a little bit to make it simple to get my fingers in. You can use your fingers to do this, but your fingernails will tend to make dents in the paper and otherwise sort of disrupt it and leave behind marks that we were there. And again, we want to tread lightly in conservation. We want to leave as little evidence of our 
passing as possible. Once I have one arm up, I'll stabilize it with this larger block of plastic. This is just a block of Delrin that I drilled a small hole in. This gives me more of a purchase on the paper and allows me to really stabilize things. What you don't want is the paper and the staple moving with respect to one another. That's going to give you small tears in the paper. It's going to enlarge the holes that the staples have created in the cover in particular and just make for a sloppy comic book when we reassemble. I'm going to remove these staples, taking care to note both top and bottom and orientation, top bottom, of each staple. I like to push and pull at the same time. I found that works best. Here's, here's an example of why we keep track of top and bottom. Look at how small the upper arm is relative to the lower arm on this staple. And if we were to swap these positions, either top and bottom, or even just flip the orientation of that, the marks in the paper, in the centerfold, would not match up with the original ones when we replace this staple. And that's why it's important to keep these orientations straight. And I use a little piece of painter's tape with the top and bottom. And I know that when I put it back, I'm going to put it back just the way I found it. I'm going to do the same with the top staple, push and pull. Sometimes you'll find that pushing one arm completely out and then twisting it a little bit and removing the other arm is the simplest way to remove it. In contrast to the lower staple, this one has nearly the same length arms, although note here again, the upper arm was shorter than the bottom arm. Alright, keeping a clean studio and well organized is critical, especially if you have multiple jobs going on. So I'm going to put this tape up and out of the way and ensure that no stray paper is going to come into contact with it. Speaking of, we're going to remove the inner wraps. We're going to place them in mylar safely out of the way. And we can get to work. This is a good time to assess the paper quality of the interior of the cover. You can see it's solidly off-white. Not an appreciable amount of tanning. The issue we have here is that we have these white spots, as you can see in that small tear, that are water stains. And they, they make the moderate amount of tanning, or even mild amount of tanning here, sort of pop. And so we want to minimize the difference between that slight tanning and the whiteness in those water spots. Here I'm addressing that small ink blotch that we saw with my Pentel Click Eraser. It's a PVC white eraser that works quite well. And it's not abrasive enough to disrupt the gloss unless you really get crazy with it. So it's my preferred eraser for these Silver Age books and indeed for modern and bronze as well. You can use a slightly more abrasive eraser with Golden Age. All right, I promised you shorter, more frequent episodes for this conservation series, so I think I'll wrap this episode up here and dry clean the front cover off camera with the same techniques you've seen me use before. Namely, starting with a light touch and a cotton round and using the same Pentel click eraser wherever I see any soiling. It is important to always do your dry cleaning prior to any wet cleaning because if you leave any soiling or foreign matter on the surface of the comic book and move on to wet work, you may solubilize those contaminants and allow them to move down into the paper matrix where they may become more difficult to remove. Next episode, we'll start our wet cleaning. Most of the materials I use for this conservation project are available from Amazon and the affiliate links in the description if you need any of them for your own conservation projects. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.